do 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 hey weirdos and malafolks how y'all doing today i am i am i am apparently unable to speak words today i am doug also known as guslato and top doug design and i am here to paint for you today how's everyone doing hey what is up mcbluff Yep, yep, I do the, you know, the beard is braided, so you may hear in the background a little bit of noise coming from uh, my, oh, am I being really loud? Do you want me to turn up the compression on my microphone? Because I can do that. But if you hear some noise in the background, it's, uh, I've got a bunch of uh, contractors here, they're doing some uh, demo on my patio, we had this weird thing happen where like all of the uh, tile went and just bulged up and popped up. It was very, very weird. The contractor said he's never seen anything like it before. So anyway, uh, so they're out there demoing it so we can get some new tile installed out there. So if you hear some noise, that's what's going on. And so I've got the beard all braided up so that when I go out there, I can throw on a uh, face mask real fast and I just, you know, tuck it up into there. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yes, I'm always enthusiastic, and let's be honest, it catches everyone off guard. It, it, it catches me off guard sometimes. It catches my wife off guard. It catches everyone off guard, my enthusiasm. But yeah, so I'm going to be continuing on the mercenary keyword today. We've already got uh, Taylor, uh, uh, Alt Miss, um, sorry, it's Miss Deed, which is Alt Taylor, finished up here. Uh, we've got the two Victorias. They've got a little bit of detail work left to go on them. Hey, what is up, Furic? But I am going to, because uh, it's just the tiny little details there. That's not as much fun. So I'm going to be starting on someone new today. Zoom. Helps if I, you know, jump him into the middle of this camera there. That is going to be Alt Bishop. So I'm very excited to get going with him. So it's Stabby Gals and guys. It's not just uh, gals. We've got, you know, one dude there. What I'm really excited for is I'm probably going to be at some point painting up Barbaros with this crew. And I've got a copy of alt the alt heavily armored Barbaros that I'm really excited to paint. Because he's fun, it, you know, having the two pit fighters running around is fun. And, you know, we'll see how he is with the uh, new things, the errata. So, yes. So we're diving right on in. Let's get some painting going on. So what I'm going to be starting out with is let's hit his fleshy, fleshy goodness because the man has a lot of flesh on him here. This man never met a shirt he enjoyed. And why am I put? For some reason, I was putting that on my lap like I'm going out to eat or something. But yeah, uh, how was everyone's weekend? I had a very nice weekend. Um, the game store that I go to, and I, you know, you'll hear me talk about them all the time because they are a super awesome game store, and I love them very much. Uh, Dragon's Lair here in Houston. They finally had their grand opening. Oh, well, it's more of a grand reopening. Not that they've actually really been closed. It's their grand opening on their brand new space. Oh yeah, I saw that. You was that you got. Fourth place there, or was it you got the uh, the wooden spoon? Because I can swear I saw that it was, you know, podium plus spoon or something there. Or, or did you, you know, go and win it? Fourth place. Nice. Where was that at? This might be a little bit thick. Indianapolis. Nice, nice. So I don't know why two of the Nephilim models have connections to an Ottoman admiral from the 16th century. Okay, that is... um. Wait, which Ottoman admiral from the 16th century is that? Because that is news to me.
Oh yeah, because you're in the. Uh... Oh, Hey Raiden Barbarossa is. I did not know that was an Ottoman general. That's kind of cool. Oh yeah, you know that's a, that is one thing I do miss about uh, Louisiana was having the week of Mardi Gras off. We would go down. Um, we would get tickets to a couple parties down in the French Quarter and go have a blast down there. My favorite one was when we would get tickets to. Um, the uh, Acme Oyster House party. And that was awesome because all you can eat, oysters. And so that was truly, truly delightful. We have the uh, new space for Dragon's Lair Houston. Um, oh my gosh. So they went from about 4,000 square feet which is not a bad size for a local game store. It is a solid-sized local game store. But they went from 4,000 feet to about uh, 10,000 feet now. So they've got uh, four, about 4,000 feet square feet of just gaming area and 4,000 square feet of just retail. And then 2000, which they are, it's not open yet, but it will be their uh, tabletop tavern. And so that's pretty cool. I'm excited for that. And so during the opening, I uh, taught a painting class there, which was a lot of fun to do. And was a little intimidating at first, as I have never taught a formal painting class before. I've taught people how to paint, but it was more just sitting down one-on-one, -on -one, uh, casually teaching someone to paint. Not an actual, hey, I am teaching a class. Pay attention to me while I show you things, and then, you know, you do things and follow along. So it was kind of cool. So several of those people who uh, were in the class said they wanted to, you know, make sure they tune into my stream sometime. So we may have some new faces here or names or whatever in the uh, the chat today because that would be awesome. So hopefully a few of them remember to tune in. And they were talking about, so apparently Mondays at my game store now is Paint Club. And they were talking about possibly, oh, we assume they have faces. But then again, could be Neverborn who are completely faces, faceless. Like, don't judge against those who don't have faces. Like Klaus. Oh, yep, that's what I was going to say. Like Klaus Norwood. Which, by the way, I'm looking forward to that kit. That looks like a fun kit there. Klaus and Hildegard. But they were also talking about uh, at some point, um, one moment, mm. gotta hydrate. Talking about possibly putting on the stream 
in the store up on one of the cameras. I mean, up on one of the uh, monitors there, which would be pretty cool. So if you're watching Ed Dragon's Larry Houston, hello, my local people. That would be delightful. Now, Ferrick, I've got an important question for you. Um, being that you uh, totally ended up uh, somehow guilting the uh, the game devs dev team into you know doing your bidding, I suppose, and uh, got yourself a reference on an actual card. Please tell me you actually ran some swine curse during the tournament. Okay, good, good, good. So Firek loves to call people uh, cowards. It's kind of, it's sort of his catchphrase on their, uh, the Steam Powered Scoundrels podcast. And on, you know, a weird place and really anywhere that Firek do tread. Calls people cowards. In a joking way. In a fun, delightful way. But that does mean you are forever obligated to, when you can, use the swine cursed. Just like if they ever bring out a, uh, you know, I've been telling them, got to bring out that uh, alternate uh, Serena Bowman, Doug Bowman. If they ever make that an official thing, um, I will obviously be obligated to run it whenever I can. Yeah, um, the last so I ran a tournament the weekend before, and there was one person who I ended up seeing uh, who was running um, Wong, so the other word keyword that goes with the um, swine cursed. And he seemed to like him. It's a little bit too thin. Although they were trying to figure out kind of what the point of, other than, you know, keeping a body on the field, what the point was of the uh, demise uh, where they get a Bayou Gremlin on the board. Like they didn't really see a purpose for that. And I, I'm not familiar enough with either 
the uh, the Ulix or the um, Wong Cruz to really know why that would that it ends up being beneficial for them. Care to enlighten me? Because my thought was, well, it's still a bot. It's you know, a body on the board. And bodies on the board is never a bad thing. Okay. So they used to drop a uh, piglet when they died? Is that what it was? Yeah, I figured, you know, because I know the taxidermist likes corpse markers, right? Like, taxidermists can turn corpses into stuffed piglets, right? Like, I'm clearly showing my ignorance of uh, Bayou because they're not my faction. Oh, man, so it drops a corpse. Oh, yeah, because it's not a replace. It drops a corpse. So it turns it potentially into two corpses for them, right? Okay, that makes a interesting kind of sense. So it makes it two corpses instead of one corpse, but also keeps him from uh, it being a piglet, which would be potentially manipulable for Ulix or Wong there. Or yeah, you said Ulix grows it? Or... Yeah, so it, pre it prevents Ulix from abusing it a little bit there, which I feel like that's good. That's a nice... You know, buffing them while keeping it balanced. Yeah, the one the model I'm looking forward to that got, you know, a nice buff that I haven't gotten to the table yet is the Mole Men. Because I know it's, it's going to be a surprise, but I'm a fan of Marcus. I know. I know none of you knew that. None of you had ever heard that I like Marcus. This is clearly new information that no one has ever heard in this stream before. No one. I know. I know, right? It's truly shocking. I'm not the, the painter you thought I was.
The, I like how your friendly models can use your little tunnels now. Oh, yes, yeah, so you are very well aware of me and my shenanigans-filled Marcus ways. Not just Marcus, but shenanigans-y Marcus. But yet, the, uh, Swankers look like they're fun now. But I mean, I'm looking forward to getting some mole men on the table. I've already got them all painted. I've got my mole men painted. I've had them painted for a while. They were kind of a, um, I used them as a warm-up paint. Back what you know, I had, uh, not painted in a little while. And I was getting back into doing some painting. You know, it had been a few weeks since I'd painted at one point. Now, pandemic stuff. And so I used them as a nice little uh, warm-up to get myself back into it. Because I'm like, well, I never put these guys on the table, so I don't care if they look like crap because they're never going to see the table. And they turned out pretty nicely, though. So that's good. But they made a nice, uh, nice painting warm-up. to get myself back into things. Because we all take a break from time to time when it comes to painting. All right, we've got that there. All right, well, all I got to do is belts. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go with a different brand for his belts because then I'm also going to go through the uh, boots with that. So let's go with Muddy Brown here. I know, yeah, my Marcus ways are shocking. But so I've got to pick, uh, so, so as I've said a couple times, my goal for the end of the year, so by, you know, December 31st, I want to have at least one playable crew for every single faction. And so I obviously already have... Um, Neverborn and Arcanist covered. I'm doing uh, the mercenaries here as my uh, uh, crew for the outcasts. Oh, I've also got um, Explorer Society covered with the uh, Lord Cooper and Friends, the Apex keyword. So... I've got to figure out what keyword I am going to do for gremlins. And I am not going to do a cop out on it and go with Zoraida. So I want, so the actual, so yeah, they may be by you, but I'm actually going to do a gremlin as my, uh, for my, the master I do for the bayou. Hmm. 
Hmm. Not sure I like that. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to go with black on his boots and belts there. That'll be fun. Hmm. Yeah, black, black up to maybe a dark brown. That'll be nice. That'll be fun. Just to provide some contrast there. Well, obviously not Zoraida. And to be fair, I've already got, I've got Zoraida, you know, I probably have, I probably have a playable Swamp Fiend uh, word. Tri Chi would be fun. I was thinking I might do Tri Chi. I was also thinking Zip might be fun. Uh, or uh, Whiz Bang. I feel like not Ulix. Because that's just a little bit too close to um, the Marcus feel. So yeah, I think you know going going with you likes would just be a little too close to my Marcus stuff because you know he's got all of his you know animal friends, and there used to be um, no Amos cookie. I'm confused. The famous Amos cookies. Is that what we're talking about? Casual Amos, uh, my bro, y'all y'all broke me. I don't know what's going on. Beautiful. So I am giving him a red vest because I've got you know. A pop of red on all of my other um, mercenary keyword people so far. And so his vest be his pop of red. And I want cookies now, too. Oh, wait. I've got Girl Scout cookies downstairs. Yeah, Girl Scout cookie season. Makes me very happy. Hey, you know what? It's to be expected. You know, you show up to a Doug stream. 
You expect there to be food talk. If I didn't start it, you know, I'm going to join in. And if you just uh, beat me to the punch there, well, I was going to start talking about it eventually. Besides, in case you hadn't noticed, I got a big old little thing of, you know, M&Ms over here. So I've actually got, so I've got two kinds of M&Ms in here. Uh, the ones that are super colorful, those are the fudge brownie M&Ms. And these other ones are the coffee nut M&Ms. Which are really hard to find. I don't believe I'm going to base my metals now. Yeah. So you aside, grab my medals. Yeah, the fudge brownie ones are great, but so the coffee nut ones are phenomenal. But I couldn't find them for a very, very long time. Um, my wife bought a big old sharing bag of those. I want to share. You also got go by Mac Mac Bluff. Oh, is it Mac Bluff, not Mick Bluff? Because I've been saying it's Mick Bluff, and I feel bad if it should be pronounced Mac Bluff. Because I know there, there's a major difference between Mac and Mick. I think it's Scottish. Oh, it is Mick Bluff. Okay. Is making sure you'd say, you know, people by their desired name is, impro is a pro uh, important. Yeah, so for the uh, coffee, uh, the coffee nut M and M's, my wife bought a big old sharing bag of coffee nut M and M's a couple years back, and then proceeded to eat all of them, except for like, um... oh, it's because oh, you want cookies now because we were talking about um, cookies. But so my wife uh, proceeded to eat. All, she bought the uh, sharing bag with intention of sharing them with me and then proceeded to eat all of them. Except for like, like three or four. Oh, macas. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. First time I heard about macas, that threw me off. But yeah, so the um, coffee nut MMs, and so I, you know, I had like three or four of them. I'm like, oh my god, these are so good! And next time I went to the grocery store, I'd want to buy a bag, and they um, weren't available. And I haven't been able to find them for years and years and years. Well, then I don't know why I didn't think to look up buying them online earlier than I did. But I finally was like, wait a minute. My wife's birthday was coming up. So I bought her. I was like, I'm going to buy her some coffee nut M&Ms. Well, the thing is, you could only buy, you know, like things where it's like two bags or like eight bags. And buying eight bags of coffee M&Ms was only like, I don't know, five, 
five, maybe ten dollars more expensive than buying two bags. So I'm like, well, and, and then I got the um, free shipping, and it was guaranteed to show up in time for my wife's birthday. The two bags was not guaranteed to show up in time. So clearly, buying uh, eight bags, and we're talking these are the big sharing bags of M&M's, clearly was the best decision. So now we have a stupid amount of Coffee Nut M&M's. And it's delightful. Because they're also just kind of the perfect thing to crunch on while I'm uh, working here for y'all. Oh, yeah. That makes sense as far as avoiding that fey name magic. Got to avoid, uh, as Harry Dresden says, you got to avoid giving someone your uh, your true name. For true names have power. You know, I was literally just talking about uh, Dresden Files with um, Play Weird right before we fired this up. And I love the I love the Dresden Files. I am a Dresden Files fanatic. When the last two came out, I literally um, finished the, when the last two books came out. So what uh, Peace Talks and Warzone, when those came out, I literally finished each of those within uh, 24 hours of their release. I was very, very excited. Also, it was the first time. Um, ooh, Dune inspired Seeker Crew. That's kind of, that totally makes sense. So I'm catching up on chat there. I'm not sure if the whole true the the true name thing hasn't been touched on in the world of Malifaux at all, to my knowledge. So I'm not sure if um, the world of Malifaux has the. Um, power of names uh, type magic going on that other um, universes have. Hey, what's up, Haunted? How you doing? Nice. Good times. Sounds like a uh, fun, fun uh, thing to do. Play weird.
How's your weekend haunted? Oh, good luck with adding on those the 12 arms of Lady Yume. I got very frustrated with mine, and she's still sitting uh, half-built. Because I got her arms all mixed up, and uh, she annoyed me. So she's sitting somewhere else over there. So many arms on Lady Yume. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, the... Oh, God, yeah. Rage quit on you, man. Yeah, that was just... Ugh. But if I'm not mistaken, did you... Uh, did the... um? I think the instructions on Lady You may have been updated since then. Because she's got numbers on her arms, but there were no numbers on the instruction. Hey, I'm all for easy there. Oh, dear God. I believe that's called wanting to stab myself in the face. Giving her Yakuza sleeves on every single arm. Oh, my God. You first, under construction paints. You first. Mad person. I mean, do you hate joy? That sounds like something uttered by someone who hates joy. Oh, no, so back when the uh, Yume originally came out, there wasn't the, um, on the, uh, there wasn't the numbers on it there. But if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned that you'd fixed that. I just haven't returned to it since then. Because I was upset. All right, I just got a little more of that snow there. Well, I also, one of the, I think the box art, the render on the box had her mirrored to what her model, what her model actually is. If I remember correctly, that was one of the other things that was driving me slightly insane. You know, that'd be fun. That's just the power move.
All right. I believe all the base coats are done. Yeah, this guy's coming together quick. I love it. All right. I'm going to stretch for a moment. Ooh. Eat an M&M. &M. Now hydrate. Oh, God. The Phoenix Hands from Kingdom Death. That is just... That's for those who hate joy. To be fair, that entire game is for those who hate joy. But in a fun way. I love that game. Actually, yeah, I'll let that dry. Yeah, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit because I've got to let the let the metals dry for a little bit before I go in there and add a uh, do a wash on them. Then so I'm gonna get going on more of his skin. Did I grab the right? Yep, tan shadow. And a little bit of a dark highlight to that. Oh. Slow clap for those jokes. She can give herself several rounds of applause, honestly. But you know what she can't do? 
She can't give herself a standing ovation. I've got to get Lady Yumi to the table at some point. But I haven't played Dreamer all that much lately. So, I haven't really had a chance to see how she shines, you know? Death by Wet Willies. Oh, my God. You know, that does sound like a very uh, dreamer thing to do, though. Let's grab. I'm going to give his medals a quick little wash here. Oh, doing Tony frames. So, so what is the animation?
Uh, let's see. It's based on some of the leadership centric masses. Oh, that's awesome. Do you ever post these on the Instagram or just on um, Discord in a weird place? So I feel like I need to keep more uh, on top of this because I really like it when I, I like to see whenever you uh, pay, whenever you post something new. That's always cool. Ah, uh, true, true. I'm going to do something funny. So I have a little bit of a, uh, I noticed here, got a bit of a gap on in that I didn't fill. So I'm going to do something kind of ridiculous here. And I am giving him a gold chain to distract from that gap there. Basically, I'm just going to use some gold paint in there in that crease as a gap fill. Creative solutions, right? Let's see how that works out. Yeah, it actually looks like it'll work decently. Ha ha ha! Heck yeah! So it kind of then ends up disguising the spot where I failed to gap fill. All right. Oh, oh no, I threw my uh, m and on the floor. <clears throat> Come here, m and &M. You don't belong on the floor. Five second rule. Totally works. All right, time to hydrate. Exactly. Distraction via gold chain. All righty. Well, that means I'm going to get going on his pants. I don't know. It, it only looks like it was more than five seconds because um, time delay from streaming and, you know, I don't know. Totally making things up here. Maybe I'm just a disgusting, disgusting person who eats four minutes. And I'm okay with that.
I mean, I'm already licking my brush, so. Floor minimum can't be any worse than licking my brush, right? So to be fair, I totally uh, – so I was teaching the paint class this weekend. And, well, there were actually – there were a couple kids in the paint class, which, not going to lie, I'm not always great with kids. I have no children of my own other than furry four-legged ones. I'm better at being the uncle than the dad. And at one point, they're like, hey, it's like, wait, why are you licking your brush? I'm like, um, because. So I had to explain to uh, kids in my painting class why I was uh, doing, br why I was licking my brush. Which I thought was kind of funny. That's not well, also, I'm not using uh, oil paints here. That's not how Bob Ross died. How did Bob Ross die? And to be fair, there are many um, like old school artists. He actually died from cadmium poisoning? Is now is that an urban legend or is it actually how he died? Cuz I know that many uh old school artists definitely um Ran into problems because of, you know, cadmium and um, lead and titanium poisoning. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, so they're actually, at, so at the Houston Museum of Natural History, there's actually this really cool exhibit on, um, it was called Death by Natural Causes. And so it was kind of a, an exhibit of all the things in the world that can kill you. And so they had the little poison garden, whereas, you know, all these different poisonous uh, stuff, etc. cetera. Um, like a poison garden. But they also had the part on art supplies. And the whole, um, Van Gogh and various artists suffering from various heavy metal poisonings.
there was also in the same area where they uh, touched on the uh, the radium girls. And so when we went through that exhibit, uh, my wife definitely gave me uh, very pointed looks at the point when I was talking about uh, licking of one's brushes as an artist. But I'm so I think the thing that I would need to do to um, really break myself of licking my brush would be to uh, learn to do oil paints, which I've seen some really really good results. If you ever um, another guy to go watch on um, Twitch here he tends to stream late in the evenings, um, James Wapple. Dude is honestly one of the best miniature painters out there right now. He is a wizard with a paintbrush and a mini. And he has switched over to painting almost entirely. Unless I'm mistaken, he paints almost everything with uh, oil paints now. But phenomenal painter, super nice guy. So yeah, if you want to learn, uh, now I've just got to sit down at some point and learn those. The other thing is that it feels like, so I've got a ton of paint here. You can't, you know, you can't see it on camera there. Uh, over the course of times, I mean, you see, I, on this model already have used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 different um, bottles of paint already. So yeah, I've already used 12 different bottles of paint on this. And so a lot of that's one of those things that over time it feels a little daunting when you're getting started with painting because it feels like, oh, you need a lot of different paints. Now, you don't need that many paints. I tend to do it because it gives me a consistent um, look across them. Yeah, I could, you know, mix a little more. But it's just fa uh, it's generally just faster to just step up the cr the um, color scale as opposed to doing more mixing. And then I get you know consistent results across an entire project. And honestly, even then, I am a lot of times I'm doing like a you'll see I end up doing a lot of you know. 50-50 mixes or mixes where I kind of leave a gradient in the middle between uh, one color and the next. Just because it makes for a nice uh, transit, helps make those transitions a little bit cleaner. So I think the cost is one of those things that's kept me from diving into doing the, um, trying out the oils. I need to get to ReaperCon at some point. I mean, that's that's in Texas. It's just up in the Dallas area. It's just it always seems to fall on a weekend when I got something else going on, completely unrelated 
to the hobby or anything. Heck, I mean, I think it's up in Denton, and my wife, my wife has family up, extended family up in Denton. He also does a lot at uh, Adepticon, unless I'm mistaken. Like there's, a, I think that there's at um, Adepticon, there's what they call Fort Wapple, which is like the hobby area or something. But if you watch his stream, you get kind of a strong uh, – when I've watched his stream before, I've gotten a very strong um, Bob Ross vibe off of it, his streams. It's kind of the, the feel I get off his streams in a fun way. He's very Bob Rossian of miniature painters. And I would love to go to Reaper. I know, uh, well, I want to go to ReaperCon. I got to figure out when the next one of those is. I'd also love to go to Adepticon. Unfortunately, at the point when you know it was uh, time to be booking stuff for that, uh, pandemic stuff was still really bad, and so the wife said no. Still hoping I could maybe convince her. You know, hey, things are looking better now, but. Who knows? We shall see. Where did I put that? Okay, those are my skins. Hello. Where did I put mahogany down? There you are. Hello, mahogany. Oh, you can't really see it on uh, camera here. And I'm going to zoom out for a second. But when I'm uh, painting, I do end up actually putting the colors together in order you know like these are the uh shades that i've used for each of the different things so i kind of know where the next step is going to be so it kind of helps me keep organized as i paint so Organization is key. Yeah, um, I'm also aiming for, uh, you know, I'm also aiming for Nova. 
because of the whole USFT championship thing there now? I know a bunch of my guys are probably want, going to want to go, my locals, being that we have a hyper-competitive Houston meta. I have no idea. I've never been to Nova. Um, the main conventions I've hit are obviously um, Las Vegas Open. And I hit Gen Con most years. But I haven't hit Nova Open yet. So I have no clue what the numbers are like for Nova. Gen Con is absolutely massive, but it's less minis focused. So you don't see as many, you know, as huge of a minis tournaments at Gen Con usually. Like Gen uh, for uh, Malifo Gen Con is honestly more of a shopping convention for me, and a hanging out with people I know, and then I'll play you know some games, but it's not the uh, you know huge one that say Nova or Adepticon are, or honestly even uh, LVO is more minis. Fo I mean LVO is one hundred percent minis, so it's a little more. geared towards that than say Gen Con is. But I'm also a huge board gamer, so Gen Con's a big time for me too. So I was going to be running a uh, GT here in Houston as part of the um, Warzone Houston, a, a local convention that's kind of, you know, getting up and running, getting bigger each year. But unfortunately, the date they wanted to put that was two weekends after Nova opened. And so when we were discussing, you know, hey, what weekend does everyone want? I'm like, well, that's kind of a not a great weekend with it being, you know, that close to Nova Open with the USFT championship being there. But 
they wanted to avoid the uh, Frontline Games uh, te- Vegas Teams Tournament for, um, I think it's 40K. 40K or Age of Sigmar or something, I'm not sure. But they wanted to avoid the Vegas Teams Tourney. So unfortunately, two weekends after Nova Open is too close to really get a... Uh, a good Malifo turnout, unfortunately, I feel like. Because I kind of feel like most anyone who is going to be traveling, you know, willing to travel the distance from, uh, you know, the East Coast or the West Coast or the Midwest to come to a Malifo tournament, well, they're probably going to be going to Nova Open. But they also probably aren't going to be able to swing, you know, Nova Open, Empty Weekend, War Zone. But with the new space at my local store, Dragon's Lair, the new 4,000 square feet of gaming space, I believe they've got uh, 14 miniatures tables now. So that's, you know... And of those ones, I know that um, their five old ones were, uh, I was able to push those together. So effectively, on the minis tables, without being right on top of each other, I will be able to get um, eight plus nine, that is 17. I'll be able to get 34 players. So, yeah, if you um, – I literally just yesterday posted – so I, do, I run a monthly tournament. And just yesterday I posted the announcement in a weird place and various other places for the uh, March monthly. And I posted some pictures of the new space there to try to make you all jealous and get you want to come down to Houston to play some Malifo. You can see the absolutely ridiculous size that this new space has. We do, so we do, um, right now, Thursday night is our uh, casual play night. And I'm working on getting more people to come out. The issue is that a lot of people just can't get a night off to go in the middle of the week. A lot of my guys have kids or, you know, jobs. A lot of my people come in uh, for the tournaments, come all the way over from Austin. And so best turnout is always a uh, tourney day. Just the way it goes. But working on getting a better uh, weekly turnout on Thursday nights. Are you in the area, Katerin Lama? Oh, yeah, March 12th is my tournament here. I was about to say, ooh, maybe I can come to that, Furic. No, I'll be at my local tournament here. To be fair, it's not really directly competitive competition because Des Moines versus, you know, Houston, that's a long distance away.
Yeah, God, you know, we're getting to the time of year where people are getting busy again. You know, the uh, the winter is starting to, you know, recede from us. At least it is down here in, you know, Texas. The uh, I, I bounce from using my uh, air conditioning, you know, air conditioning during the day and heater at night. It's kind of hilarious. I'm making one of the heads of your... Oh, that's delightful and disturbing. And I love it. I look forward to seeing it. Derek, are y'all planning on being at uh, Gen Con again this year? Oh, good. We actually need to make plans, you know, like hang out, hang out beyond just the uh, shenanigans filled tournaments. Oh, yeah. I got mine, uh, you know, I got mine the day they uh, came out. Funny thing is, I actually got it while I was at uh, Badges went on sale during Las Vegas Open. I was, I was running around and I, you know, just happened to uh, buy my badge during that, uh, during around at Las Vegas Open. I thought it was amusing. Now, one of the scoundrels actually lives in uh, Indianapolis, right? Roman does, right? Or am I getting that wrong? I get mixed up with where everyone... Okay, Roman is in Indy, yeah. Yeah, being able to stay with... Uh, I have a friend from high school who lives uh, in the Indianapolis area. So we crash with her. Except we didn't last year because she had just had a kid. So um, didn't want to get the uh, kid sick with uh, COVID. You know, didn't want to risk it at all. So we actually stayed in the hotel last year. It was only the uh, second time I've done the hotel thing. But yeah, being able to crash with a friend is uh, very convenient when it comes to doing the Gen Con thing. Something just fell off my desk and I don't know what it was. Hmm. All right, let's go back and you know, I should do his hair. What do I want to highlight his hair with? Do I want to go the same route I went with her? With that kind of bluish hair there. 
Yeah, I'm going to go with a really deep blue, deep blue black there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, if you've never been to Gen Con, it should, I mean, if you're a nerd and you've never been to Gen Con, Gen Con should be your go-to. Come on, little uh, Vortex Mixer. Why are you being weird? If I push my uh, paint in just the wrong direction, it doesn't mix. Because Vortex Mixers are weird. There we go. Just a little bit more there. There it is. So what I'm doing here, I actually really like using like a uh, kind of a turquoise mixed with black to highlight black. Gives kind of that nice, um, almost a raven feather sheen to it. But if you haven't done Gen Con, Gen Con is something to look into doing. I love Gen Con. It's like my favorite time of year. And so this last year at Gen Con, I made the, so I, every couple of years I make the mistake of thinking, oh, right, I should take a hobby class there. And I run into the problem that I don't really get a lot of out of hobby classes at Gen Con. Unfortunately, just because the uh, environment is not very conducive to me learning. Their hobby area is really noisy and there's multiple classes going on. And so it just doesn't really usually end up working out very well for me. But then I forget that. Well, so I take a hobby class, remember that, go, oh, right, I'm not going to take any hobby classes next year. And so I don't for a couple of years. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe I should take a class. And I do, and then I remember it, and then I'm sad. And so this last year, I had to leave, you know, doing the Bonanza Brawl shenanigans with Firek and other Doug and Roman and Victoria and company. And ultimately, I would have had more fun if I just stuck around and kept playing uh, Bonanza Brawl with them. Not that it was the fault of the person who was teaching the class at all. 
it just wasn't conducive to um, teaching. Oh my god, he most definitely, most definitely. Well, we'll know in advance, you know what? We'll, we'll just have to block it out in advance. Say, hey, this day we're gonna bonanza brawl. But it's going to be not, oh, I did a brawl Friday for the day. Ah, uh, you know which one? So, let's see. Um, the ones that did really, so uh, Taylor actually won the Bonanza Brawl at LVO. The other ones that were really great for it. So, Taylor, Alan Reed is a pain in the butt. Because he's got all that stuff that says, nope, you can't do your things. And then he got the um, upgrade that gave him Disguised. I have not seen him on the table yet. Uh, let's see. Candy was a pain in the butt. Um, Because of her whole, you know, hey, if you uh, activate after her, uh, before she does, lots of bad things happen to you. Yep, yep, I like, uh, I mean, whenever I play in a Bonanza Brawl, we already know who I have to play as. It's required. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, um, I have, there is a uh, character, uh, Serena Bowman, and I made my own custom Douglas Bowman. While she is not the best pick for Bonanza Brawl, she's far from the worst pick for it.
we got who uh see um was it other Doug who was running um Bo Peep? Because God, Bo Peep was nasty in that when we played. God, Bo Peep was so good for that. Basically, any model that can get extra actions is solid for that. Gracie with a Gatling gun would be ridiculous. Oh, speaking of Gatling guns, I am so glad... That Fuhatsu got hit with the uh, with that errata. Because he feels strong. Still, I mean, he still feels strong. Just not a taken every 10 Thunders list strong anymore. So I would literally see him make his way into almost every 10 Thunders list played in my local tournaments. Honestly, I plot probably 9 out of 10 tournaments. I mean, 9 out of 10, uh, 10 Thunders lists had him in it.
And unfortunately, when something is seen, when a mo versatile model is seen that much action, it is too strong, in my opinion. Which apparently the, de the designers agreed with me. Yeah, I was saying that I'm just glad that Fu Hot, because you're talking about a Gatling gun. I was saying that I was just glad that Fu Hatsu finally got, you know, brought a little bit more in line. It's okay for a versatile model to be strong. But if it's strong to the point where you see it getting taken in almost every list, every competitive list, it's too strong. Yep. And the thing is, he still seems strong enough to put on the table, but not every list strong. And talking to my uh, Ten Thunders players, it sounded like it was always the, well, I could take this model or I could take Fuhatsu. And so they had to weigh it against, you know, Fuha everything had to be weighed against Fuhatsu.
Yeah. Coming along nicely there. Alright, let's do his uh Yeah, I gotta figure out who I'm gonna do for uh Ten Thunders when the time comes. Oh, come on, why are you my my uh, vortex mixer is there we go. Oh, you know, I just realized, I think I actually have another um, keyword. Yeah, I was realizing that I probably also already have my um, keyword covered for uh, Rezzers. Because I think I've got, yeah, I've got uh, Alt McMorning painted up. Can tell you've been playing too long when you uh, forget you have uh, masters painted up. Yeah, I also haven't done very much in the way of Ten Thunders, so. Comes to Ten Thunders, I think I'm probably going to go Jacob Lynch. Well, I've got, you know, some elements of Honey Pot painted up already. I've already got um, – I painted up Mr. Graves from back when he was uh, still never born because he used to be very, very handy to, you know, shuttle never born around the board. You, you know, just grab him. With, I used to uh, bring him with uh, the Dreamer a lot because he'd just grab the Dreamer and throw him through a wall. I do have that table for him now. I'm excited that I also finally got it out in there in the world. Yeah, using Graves as an escort was delightful. Because then, you know, you wouldn't have to get your... Um, use your Master AP to actually, you know, walk. I 
I mean, my master was just too good to walk around. Why would he want to walk? He's got far better things to use that uh, those actions for. Which was kind of ridiculous. So at that time, I was using. Um, I ran him with what I called the angsty dreamer. Because it was when you could bring the uh, different upgrades on him. And so there was the upgrade that gave him. Um, I, basically, he was five. He was a five action dreamer. Plus a bonus action. Because he got an extra shoot attack and he got an extra um, melee attack or something like that. I don't remember the full build on it there. But basically he got five actions a turn and it was delightful. It was one of those things where you look at it in paper and go, okay, well, that seems interesting, but it's never going to translate well to the table. And then I was able to get to work well on the table locally. Oh my God, the stilts. One thing I do miss from Tui was basically that Marcus was his own faction. Where you could literally hire every beast in the game. So I had every beast in the game. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, and Le Levy being able to, you know, hey, I'm going to hire all of the uh, undead or all of the, well, he could do, you know, it was either undead or what was the other thing he could hire? I don't remember. But Levy had a ridiculous hiring pool, the summoning pool that um, Nicodem had was absolutely nuts. So ultimately, keywords, a uh, keyword hiring, huge boon for the game, in my opinion.
because now it just allows you to say, oh, hey, it's just standard. You can hire any Chimera model. And it does allow for some really cool cross-faction uh, summit I and mean, uh, hires is when it's the, is the add a faction in keyword makes for some interesting picks then. Oh, goodness. I just popped the uh, thing off of my... Uh, okay. Did I just break my Vortex mixer? Ooh. Did I just break you, Vortex mixer? Oh, no. I just popped the rubber bit off of it there. Hmm. I may have broken my Vortex mixer. That's weird. And I'll fix that later. You don't want to watch me uh, fiddle around with a vortex mixer on stream. Oh, am I on camera? Oh, as I get off camera, of course.
Yeah, speaking of pull my finger, so I am sad that wit that old pull my finger wiki is no more. Because that was a good source of information. However, I hated pointing new players to it because of the name. It was a useful repository with a lot of great information. But God, that name. Made it hard to recommend to people who were uninitiated into the the uh, the world of Malifaux. Let's hydrate a little bit. Mm. Exactly. But if I'm, say, uh, bringing in someone who is new to the universe, but not new to miniatures games. Uh, so, you know, basically, if I'm recruiting a person who plays GW games, most of them take their game a little bit more seriously than, say, a Bayou player does. And so trying to point them to that, just kind of, I would always get this weird look out of them. All right, that's coming along there. I believe it's time to do some flesh tones. Are you being weird there? All right, I forgot my vortex mixer is on the fritz. That's so weird. I got to figure out what's wrong with you. Weirdness. Time is it? Okay, cool. Plenty of time. Maybe. Need a little bit of tension on that. I 
which is not going to need a full tan shadow. I only have done half half so far. There we go. That'll be that's the color I'm looking for. Perfect. Got to get Mr. Muscley's muscles here. It's a little over thin. Where am I? Tan skin. Where's my tan shadow? Tan shadow, there we go. Hey, welcome back, McBluff. Alrighty. That's fun to paint up. Really enjoying it. You know, I'm enjoying this keyword across the board. It's been a fun keyword so far. Definitely a lot of skin tones in this keyword.
course, then once I'm done with this keyword, I got to figure out what uh, what faction I will be doing next. So I'll be continuing on my, you know, quest to paint one crew from every faction. So I got to figure out what faction will get love next. So after this one, do I dive headlong into the bayou? I don't know. Might be where uh, fate takes me. Well, I feel like that might be a fun one. Um, fun direction to head. It might, also, might also depend on what um, my local players are playing or not playing. So one of the reasons I jumped towards um, Outcast here. So I don't have a lot of locals playing Outcast lately. And at LVO, there was only one Outcast player. So I wanted to give, you know, a little outcast love out there. So let's see, I've already got Explorer Society, Arcanists, and Neverborn covered. Um, also, I've got Resurrectionists covered. I remembered uh, that I've got McMorning painted up.
So that's Arcanist, Neverborn, Explorer Society, Resurrectionist. That's four out of the eight. So this will be five out of the eight. So this is more than halfway there then. So it means I need a uh, guild, Bayou, and Ten Thunders. And then I actually go after Outcast, Guild, Bayou, and Ten Thunders. Oh, I was closer to finishing that uh, idea than I thought I was. <laughs> Well, there's also McTavish. Hey, and I mean, McMorning is a doctor. Have a beard in his uh in here. Take a look at his uh oh, he's got a little bit of a chin beard there. Okay. I guess I gotta give him a little bit of a beard there, don't I?
No, no, no. Don't avoid getting your doctorate. Get a doctorate. Doctors are awesome. I married me a doctor. All right. The Mick curse will consume you, will Mick consume you. I don't know. There was that one story about that talented young necromancer. I can't, um, was that Dead Man's Ball? Well, hey, you are, you know, an aspiring animator. Why not be an aspiring reanimator? I mean, animation is bringing life to the lifeless. Hey. That was a compliment. She's really good at animation.
Well, she's not being a. I mean, it's she already kind of is. I mean, she is doing the animation thing. Well, I mean, to be fair, I actually, I did, you know, part of my studies was animation when I was doing a video game design. We actually spent most of last week doing animation. Doing a whole bunch of uh, motion graphics videos. Well, I mean, Neverborn's delightful, too. I mean, I've always been more, far more fond of uh, the Neverborn than the Rezzers. But I'm just saying, animation is literally the art of bringing something still and lifeless to life. I mean, if you really think about it, um, the uh, Rezzers are really more, are kind of like Arcanists too, just very specific, with a very specific um, overlapping skill set.
Well, if you want to get even crazier there, uh, I mean, McMorning's niece is Miranda, and that and she's an arcanist. Oh, I definitely hope you are not one of those Nexus children, because those, in a city full of really creepy children, those are officially the creepiest of the children. Even creepier than the faceless uh, changelings. Pen, I clawed up that. There we go. Yeah.
All right, yeah, we're coming up on, I got about 10 minutes left here. Fastly approaching the five o'clock hour. Oh man. So who uh who's painting um who's painting tomorrow, play weird? Tomorrow's Viric, right? Ooh, king cake. I love me some king cake. Oh, yeah, because tomorrow is actual Mardi Gras. Just always good fun.
you go out and get me some punch keys. Oh, I have to ask Virak about punch keys because there's supposedly a Polish thing. But that might be a Polish American thing, not a Polish Polish thing. So I feel like I should ask Virak about that. This guy's looking good. I'm digging this guy so far. Probably got to pull that a little bit together there. Overdid the transitions a little bit there. There we go. Blended that down a little bit better. That's better. Well, I believe it would appear to be our time for the day. So everyone, have a wonderful evening, and I will uh, see you all next week. Stay weird, everyone. See you tomorrow watching uh, Virek. Have a great night.